before we get to even to those two, we just mentioned our D line. Mm-hmm. We just talked about Chase Young, Montez Sweat. These two guys, you know, we in, in a perfect world, we can keep them, we can pay them both, and and they'll be playing top, top tier football. Uh, unfortunately, we live in reality, so we have to make some of these decisions. What do we look for here? And is this is this a depth? Is this just hey, let's just get some bodies to fill in the back the behind them, or are we really looking for a replacement like we talked about? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of depends on on what happens in the days up to the draft. If if yeah. we were to make a trade of say Montez Sweat or Chase Young, then I would say yeah, yeah, we need to re- we need to draft his replacement. Um, or if we were to trade back in the draft, I would then kind of change my philosophy to say I'm okay getting a. Uh, someone else that can end. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm okay getting somebody that would be able to come be a part of that rotational piece the way that yeah. they were doing with our D tackles to be a, someone that can be better than James Smith Williams, than yeah. Casey Two Hill, than F.A. Obata, someone that probably has more talent. I'm okay with that, knowing that right. we would have more picks to address the O line and corners and some of the other holes that we have. Um, but I think I think what what you're kind of seeing from from the team, or as you mentioned, what made them successful last year is you're going to want to have somebody who's a, a disciplined player on the line, who's unselfish, who's yeah. who's willing to recognize it. I don't get to rush upfield. My job is to occupy occupy this tackle because the linebacker or Jonathan, I'm taking up space for Jonathan Allen to make a play. Right. And so, you know, I think that's kind of what you're looking for there. You you may not be looking for the guy who's going to be our next double digit sack person, but are you looking for someone who can do some of the dirty work? Right. Right. So, and, and yeah, and that's some, and I, and I love that you said that somebody has discipline, but somebody that is not afraid to kind of be obedient, to play within the system. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't feel like we're going to be in the running for any of these Franchise changers, the Will Andersons, the Tyrese, that you know, you, you, shoot, Nolan Smith has been going up there. We don't even know how that's going to play mm-hmm. out with him, but we're not we're not going to get one of those guys that can just do it. Just you just put them in space. We're going to need to get a guy maybe like a, a Van S. Um, Ryan Kerrigan two I'm saying that. <laughs> 6'5", 272, complete edge and D tackle. That is the type of thing that I need. Just like with our offense, how we have guys that are position flex, they can play a lot of different positions. I really feel like what he is could potentially be able to bring to the table would be huge. Um, he has got ideal size, he got elite power. In his final year, he started to play elite. He didn't really get much time um, at you know times before that, but. I mean, I just think he's one of those type of guys that is, is going to be able to play. We know what Iowa football is, just like Wisconsin. Those guys, yeah. they play within the system. They play complementary football. Yeah, My favorite word last year, you know what I mean, <laughs> or my favorite mm-hmm. phrase. So I, I, somebody like him that is coachable, that we can bring in, and that could, if we need him inside, put him inside. If we need him outside, if we need him far outside or outside line, rush that. We can put him in any of those spots. That's kind of something I'm looking at, athletic, um, but coachable. Yep. You know what I mean? Impact, but discipline. Those type of things. Yep, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with you. That's one of the guys that I would have on, on my radar. And I will say this. If we do nothing before the draft and our 16th pick is on one of these defensive linemen, I'm not going to be very happy. I will say that because no. I feel like the 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 hole at, at offensive line, we need one more starter there, and then the hole at corner is way Huge. more yes. important. So if that yes. happens, I will understand, but I'll be like, ah. you know, but but if like I said, if we, we were to trade back, right. And but if we were to get, you know, another second round pick where you could be addressing these guys, okay. Now there's there's some luxury here. Or in the second round, you know, because I, I am with you, Lucas Van Ness is that's exactly who is someone that I'd be interested in, but potentially in the second round, I don't know if he would be there by this time. And I said his name way early in January when Jack was on the show, I think, uh, I don't know if you had to hop off at that point. I'm not even going to pronounce this guy's name. I'm going to say his name is AA and he's from yeah. Northwestern. Northwestern. Yeah. <laughs> and 
It's because he's a little bit of a bigger guy. You know, he was a, uh, he, you know, he's, his tape is phenomenal. You know, he's been rising because of it. And he, he is bigger than Chase and Montez. So he would bring a new element into it where on that other side is you got a a little bit of a bigger body, a powerful guy, you know, but he's not going to be the speed rusher, but it it brings another element to the team, to the line and, and, and what Jack Del Rio can work with. So, you know, I would be saying if we wanted to address the defensive line, AA in the second round, something like that could could be something that that I would get a little excited about. Yeah, and now now I know, I know you said he wasn't fast, but he ran a four four at the combine. Did he really? So, Holy smokes! Yeah, he could move a four four nine, so he he could definitely move. Um, one other guy I wanted to look at, and this is definitely later. This is kind of where. Uh, I can't think of the name of the guy from, I think it was from Montana last year that we were trying. Troy Anderson. Troy Anderson, yeah. Yeah, the guy we were looking at. This is somebody that's going to be similar to him, in my opinion, that's going to drop. But at one point, he was leading the SEC in sacks. Drew Sanders, he's a linebacker and edge. He's going to be more outside, more speed. He's got, see, 6'4", 235, so he's not going to be inside. But he ran a 4'3", 40. Totally, I mean, he transferred from Alabama to Arkansas and – was leading the league in sack, and they got a guy that over there named uh, Bumper Pool, who's their main defensive, you know, stutter or whatever. But Drew Sanders was quietly stealing the show this past year. I, I mean, honestly, he's one of those guys that like to Troy Anderson last year, like uh, the guy from Wisconsin that we were looking at last year. These are some of the guys that I feel like, man, they could, uh, they could stick it, get into the system, learn from what they're doing, and then make these impact plays. But again, position flex. Not only are we dealing with edge where we don't necessarily need, it's not as imperative that we need to have him as right now. Linebacker is somewhere we definitely need to. So if we can have him as a roving linebacker or right. edge rusher and, you know, so he can jump back into the, uh, the chess piece. Into the, right. Right. And that's something that I think would benefit us more because then it's going to make that offense think okay is he rushing or is he dropping back because he has ability to do both and that's something that we need uh as we've seen in the last couple of years our, our linebackers ain't really covering you know anything out of the backfield or can't really i mean jamin's got the speed and everything but again it's getting him to play within himself and getting him to play with his instincts i think getting a guy like this who can do both really kind of puts that offense on edge so you know again we don't need it but it kind of lends to helping another position, but a body in this position, just in case things don't work out for those two guys we talked about. Exactly. No, no, that that's no different than there was a lot of talk that we had some interest last year in Kyle Hamilton, um, that the Ravens, the safety that the Ravens got, because that idea of he can play either safety positions, he could play corner, he could play Buffalo nickel. It'd be the, the same thing, only closer to the line of scrimmage. Is he going to play along the D line? Is he going to be a linebacker? What you know? Where can you mix and match him? That's a great. That's a great suggestion that you had. Um, so I've got somebody that I'm hoping falls in the draft, and you okay. and and um, Alex mentioned him, and I've mentioned him before. So you're not going to be surprised by this. All right, but it, I don't understand why he's listed as a as a edge defender, and I guess it's because he did this in college, but he doesn't have the body for it in the pros. Okay, yeah. and it's my guy. From Wisconsin, Nick Herbig. All right. And I'll tell you why I want him to Should fall know. and fall to us. Yes. <laughs> if if we draft Nick Nick Herbig, I, I might get my first commander's jersey. Okay. Let's go. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. You don't you don't you don't have one already? You don't no, have I do not, I do not, I do not. No. <laughs> the future. <laughs> but I, I can't I can't buy the commander's jersey until Snyder sells. That's been my word. Yeah, I, I understand that. I get that. Yeah, yeah. That I want to be careful because when I buy jerseys, they usually leave. So I, I got to be yeah, careful. Well, <laughs> getting LeVar Arrington's and Fred Smoot's and they're gone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you about Nick Herbig and what, what, what excites me about him. So he is undersized to be an edge guy, but that's what he played at, at Wisconsin. He's 228, 230 pounds. But he's got a knack for blitzing. And just like hmm. you were talking about with Drew Sanders – is if you can move him around, he he was a phenomenal rusher for Wisconsin. Yeah. I saw that's you know he put so much pressure on the quarterbacks. But the other thing about him is he's good in pass coverage. What do we need? Yeah. Linebackers, <laughs> Linebackers who can cover. cover. 
you know? Yep. So it's like this guy too, kind of what you're talking about, probably not as athletic, not as fast as, as Drew Sanders could be a little bit of a, of a chess piece and someone that could kind of probably grow into an inside linebacker role more so than being this edge guy. So I'm really surprised in all the stuff that he's listed as a, as edge. Cause I don't think he's got the body to handle it, but there, he has some abilities that could be helpful right. for us. And I like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And anytime you talk about a, a defensive guy from Iowa, Wisconsin, you know, some of those meat grinders. Oh yeah. I love that. Oh, I absolutely yeah. love that. Well, so, I mean, the, we'll the guy that I love that we wouldn't have a chance with, uh, I, and it doesn't fit our team is Wisconsin's guy, uh, Keanu Benton. I mean, that's oh, the yeah. defensive tackle I would love to have, but oh, yeah. that's not our need and we're not going to, you know, get him, but you know, he, he's a, he's a solid player. So that's one of the reasons I put it as D line, because if there is a need on, on the defensive line and it would be on more of edge than it would D tackle, yes. you know, we, we signed, um, we, we had the extension for Deron Payne this year. Jonathan Allen got paid a year ago, but Darius Mathis will be hopefully coming back from injury. We yep. got Ridgeway that we brought. So, you know, so we're kind of, we're set at D tackle. Yes. Is this a seventh round pick that we may get for depth or something? Or do we just totally forego D tackle altogether? If it's me, I'm not doing anything. And, and honestly, I don't have a whole lot of prospects on my D line list because I've only focused on the, on the outside. It's, you know, yeah. if anything, if you wanted to, my, my guy AA can go inside and out, you know, so right. you could go with that right. if you, if you wanted to, but, but yeah, it's like, I, I think that position is pretty well stocked up right now. Plus we got Benning Potoia. Who da- shined in the Dallas game? Yes, that is right. <laughs> <laughs> as as did some other guys. Let's go. Yeah, he Let's did. go. Yeah. He did. <laughs>